All right, now that we've uh, completed the content of this chapter, now we can go play with our understanding of it all, okay? In our first question in the extras, we have a particle of mass m and charge q is attached to a spring with force constant k hanging from the ceiling. Its equilibrium position is a distance h above the floor. It is pulled down a distance d below equilibrium and released at time t equals zero. A. Under the usual assumptions that d is less than lambda is less than h, calculate the intensity of the radiation hitting the floor as a function of the distance big R from the point directly below q. At what r is the radiation most intense? Neglect the radi radiative radiative dap damping of the oscillator. Yeah, tongue twister. Part B, as a check on your formula, assume that the floor is of infinite extent and calculate the average energy per unit time striking the entire floor. Is it what you'd expect? C, because it is losing energy in the form of radiation, the assumption of the oscillation will gradually decrease. After what time tau has the amplitude decreased by a factor of d over e? Okay, let's draw it out. So we have a spring attached to the ceiling, as indicated with the uh, stripe lines. Some q constant that we have. Height h is the equilibrium. Q and big R is the radius. Um, so yeah, let's uh, dive in then. So part a. We know this is an oscillating electric dipole with amplitude P-naught equal Q times D, okay? And the frequency here is this K over M, or uh, square root of K over M, pretty normal there. So the average pointing vector is given by uh, mu-naught over rho-naught squared omega to the fourth, 32 pi squared, uh, yeah, 32 times pi squared times C times sine squared theta r over r squared in the r hat direction. So the average uh, per unit, or rather the power per unit area on the floor is i floor is equal to this uh, average vector in the z hat, top, dot it with the z hat direction. Of course, we know that um, r dot z leads us to a cosine due to the fact that the r hat is made up of uh, Cartesian unit vectors, okay? So uh, we know that from our diagram, if we were to draw, you know, R and then a radius to the point Q, we could actually, uh, where the uh, script R, uh, or excuse me, the little R is the radius or the hypotenuse to the point Q. Then we know that sine theta is equal to big R over little R and cosine is equal to H over R, uh, where little r squared is equal to big r squared plus h squared so we just have a triangle there okay clearly our theta is um touching the uh h it's touching the height so the vertical axis so now we can plug everything in we know that p naught here is equal to uh, qd so we plugged it in as we see in the red and then we simplified in the next page with uh taking the uh, components and squaring them separately and now we plug in the definitions for sine squared and uh, cosine, and we join them up. So you see with that, we end up with the constants that we had before in the parentheses, and follow that with then um, r squared, a uh, big R squared times h, over plugging in the uh, you know uh, definition of little r, which is big R squared plus uh, h squared. And then we have five of those r, so we have it to the five halves power. Okay, so what we want to know is the most intense radiation. Where does that occur? Well, that occurs when we take the derivative with respect to big R and set it equal to zero. So okay, let's do that. We get rid of the constants immediately. They have nothing to do with big R. We see we have a quotient rule there, so apply it accordingly. After we're done with the quotient rule. The denominator can be multiplied over to the zero term and turn to zero itself, so we don't care about it. And uh, after that, uh, you see we tidy up the uh, quotient rule numerator, and then we see that we have a factor of h, or excuse me, a factor of r that is equivalent on both sides that cancels, and we have a factor of r squared plus h squared to the three halves that cancel, 
leaving the left hand side with just two uh, r squared plus h squared to the two halves power that just turns to one and we also see on the right hand side we just have five r big r squared instead of big r cubed easy enough um so then once we distribute that for the two halves power is just one then we distribute the two and we combine big r's so you see we have a 2h squared is equal to a 3r squared and then we just solve for r so with that we get big r is equal to two thirds times h all right makes sense nothing too crazy there um and then p for the power we just need to uh integrate the uh what is the uh intensity at the floor uh in that circle so hence we have r there intensity as a function of r rather and we need to integrate across the circle that's in the, uh on the floor so that's where we get dr d theta and we go through the entire extent hence the r integral goes to infinity and of course with our d phi we normally get our factor of two pi uh, we like that uh, once we tidy up the integral get the h outside of it then we could just substitute the x equal uh r squared and so dx is equal to two r dr and now we have a pretty simple substitution there uh, i will warn you however that this form is uh going to require the gamma functions as you see in the next step so uh yeah if you're unfamiliar with gamma functions i suppose i can find a link for you let me take note of that uh, find gamma functions okay but anyways uh, you see that we get another factor of h there that cancels i highlighted that in red nothing too crazy once you have the gamma set up then you get a familiar answer um which is actually four thirds and if you recall we had that whenever we had the uh polar angle of sine cubed uh integrated from zero to pi so that's a pretty uh, unique result. I mean, we simplify down. Uh, 4 divided by 32 goes to 1 over 8, and then we multiply by 3, so we get 24 there in the denominator. Uh, what this actually says is that this, uh, which is, um, or which should be and is, half of the total power radiated. Uh, so the rest, of course, hits the ceiling. Half goes to the floor, half goes to the ceiling. That makes sense. Then part C, the amplitude is x naught at t, so the uh, potential energy is one half k x naught squared is the energy at time t, and du dt gives us twice the power since uh, the radiated power is a half of the floor power is half of the total power. Um, again, negative since it's radiating away. Uh, so plug it through, take your d by dt, uh, cancel as much as you need to, get rid of the uh, constants, which we did in red, to the other side. We'll let that just be kappa for ease of calculation. So what we're saying is that d by dt is equal to some kappa factor times the same quantity uh, x naught squared. So we uh, can solve this, um, you know, as a differential equation. Um, and uh, yeah, factor that out and integrate across whatever we need to. This tells us that we have x naught squared is equal to d squared e to the negative kappa t, or the function goes to e, or x naught t is equal to d e to the negative kappa t over 2. So for our characteristic time, we want depth of uh, d over e. Okay, so we plug in tau for our t value, and so we get kappa t, uh, negative kappa tau over 2, and but we want to set it equal to uh, d over e, which just tells us that the uh, coefficient of e needs to be uh, equal to 1. So if that's the case, we get kappa tau equal 1, and so we push the uh, 2 kappa over, and hence we get 2 tau equal to kappa. That's just form matching from what was wanted. And then, uh, of course, tau was that constant we had before, Plug everything in, we see that omega to the fourth gives you k squared over m squared. And then we, when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal, uh, cancel down, and you uh, see here that the characteristic time is 12 pi uh, times the speed of light uh, instead of centimeters. Uh, speed of light times mass squared over mu naught, uh, k, or mu naught uh, charge squared over k times k. So, yeah, good to go there.